Yes, people, it is match day and the mighty Tractor Boys, we're at home today as we take on Watford. Before we get into anything, we've got to do the shout-outs. Massive shout-outs to Angel Care Homes for all your care needs in the Black Country in Birmingham area. Massive shout-out to Mark Darcy for all your formal menswear needs. And, of course, to Desi Ballers, highlighting all South Asians at all levels in the beautiful game. I'll put their details in the description. Make sure you check them out. But let's get to it, then. So it's a different Watford than the Watford we played earlier on in the season. Obviously, they've got Tom Cleverley in as manager now. And he's a bit of a young, upcoming manager. I think he did some youth coaching. So it's going to be interesting to see how he approaches the game. I think he likes to play a bit of, uh, uses fullbacks a lot. And, and a bit of a mixture of a 4-3-3 or a 4-2 or um, or two in the midfield. Very similar to us. He might do a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3. Um, so it'll be interesting. Obviously, whilst Watford's position, you know, they're not really going to get for playoffs. They're not really going to get relegated. But for Cleverly, you know, he's trying to prove a point, I guess, and, and get that job full time. And um, from what I'm hearing, you know, the, the um, and what you're seeing on social media and all the rest of it, the team and the squad seem to be really behind him. They've obviously got some good quality in their team. They've got that Dili Bashiru, who's a good midfielder. They've got a spree up front who's quality. Um, I thought he was a handful when we played them down at Vicarage Road. And obviously, they've got Jamal Lewis. Um, so they've got some real Premier League quality players there. Um, so And like I said, they're going to be chasing three points. I don't think Cleverley's going to set them up to come and get uh, just a point. But for us, I'm feeling confident because I was pissed off on Saturday. I think we all were. But obviously the results come in and by the end of the day, we're feeling slightly better. Got over the weekend and then the results yesterday absolutely went our way. Um, you know, Leeds dropped points. You know, I don't think we ever saw Sunderland beating them, but I, you know, and very few probably saw them getting a draw. So to them drop points, we now really have a chance to put some distance between us. So I think it's one of those where, again, subs are going to be massive, and I think that's what's going to change the game, and that's what hopefully is going to win the game for us. So in terms of lineup and what I think, then I think yeah, in goal it's got to be Hiladki, left back definitely got to go Leif Davis, centre back I think you keep it the same. You know, it's have first centre backs Burgess and uh, Wolfie. And right back, I think Clark, he needs to come in. He's a bit attacking more, freshen it up a little. In the midfield, now I'd like Taylor to come in, but I've got a feeling he'll keep it the same. So I think, whilst I think this is a game for Taylor, I think Luongo's going to come in. And obviously Sammy has to play as well. Up front, I wasn't, I'm wasn't. i not as impressed with Broadhead lately starting, so I think he's better off the bench. So for me personally, I'd like to see Amari in that left wing role. I think he's done it well before and he'll do it, um, you know, he'll play, I think he'll play well there. Number 10, you know, I don't care. He's probably the best number 10 in the league. Yes, he's been, you know, form might have dipped slightly, but he's a quality player, so you've got to play Connor Chaplin there. And then on the right wing, we know that Burns is out. We know that, obviously, I've put Amari on that side. I think this is a game for Caden Jackson. So I put Jackson on the wing. And more, he looked like he run his race a little. He looked tired and don't know what that back's having, so I think you've got to go for uh, Ali Al Hamidi there. So that's my team lineup then. So like I said, I'm feeling confident. I think subs are going to be key. We know it's a squad game. I think Sarmiento is going to have a big, big role to play as well, as will Starboy. Um, but in terms of score predictions, I think, yes, like I said, they're going to set out to kind of win. Cleverly wants to prove a point and he's got the team, he's got the dressing room. So for me, I think they will score, but I think we'll do a real professional performance. We'll come out fighting in the second half like we always do. Saturdays was just a blip. We're back to normal. I'm going to go for a 3 1 town win. It's getting close to kickoff, so I'll catch you in there.
on, Jeremy! saying about that one then peeps before we get into anything remember we're on the way to a thousand subscribers and if we hit that goal by the end of this season i'm giving away that signed blackout shirt if you ain't subscribed and it looks like there's about 65 70 percent of you that ain't subscribed that are viewing this content why not man click the subscribe button turn that little notification on so you can see when i've uploaded the videos and yeah man you could win that top by just being a subscriber if you are subscribed, love to you, but remember, tell your brethren, tell their brethren, tell your family. they got a Google account, just tell them to subscribe, man. It takes two seconds, and obviously it helps me grow this channel. But yeah, details are in the description. Check it out, but let's get to it then. So I thought that was a good game, to be honest. I thought that first sort of 10, 15 minutes, Watford were, you know, they started brighter without really threatening us. But then we grew into the game, and to be honest, if it had been another day, we'd probably go into half-time at 3-0 up. You know, we had three really good chances. Kiefer has two chances. One, he slides wide after I think Jackson plays it across. Really should be testing the keeper or hitting the target. And the header as well. I think, you know, if it's slightly higher or slightly lower, it goes in. Um, in fact, four chances even. Because then you had, was it Brody who hit the post? And then Taylor, from the angle we were at, you could see, and again, hopefully you'll see it on the clip, but from the angle we were at, it looks like that would have gone on target anyway, and it, I think it hits Brody's backside. But yeah, it was just one of those where the chances were there, the performance was a hell of a lot better than what we saw on Saturday. I don't think anyone can dispute that, but we just didn't score. But let's not be too downhearted about it, because at the end of the day, I see it as a point gained. It is a point gained. We're in second now, we're joint top with Leicester. You know, anything happens, these four games, you know, after what happened yesterday, well, it's after midnight now, but after what happened on Tuesday with Leeds and Leicester, we've gained a point now. So I think, you know, we're in a good position. I don't think it's anything to be worried about. But yeah, other than the beginning of the first two halves, maybe the first 10, 15 minutes max on each half, you know, it was all us. And like I said, Watford didn't really test us. There was a couple of chances in the second half and right at the death. And you know what? Fair play to Halad Key for pulling that save off. You know, and these are the kind of things that make you think it might be our season. I, was, um, I wasn't predicting a nil-nil, that was for sure. 
And, um, you know, fair play to Cleverly. He's got them playing good football. I thought they looked, you know, they looked solid. They defended solid. Um, and they didn't look like a team that had nothing to play for. You know, they like I said earlier in the preview, I thought they'd be playing for the manager. And you could see that today. They, they were throwing their bodies on the line. Everything in the air they won, which was a bit disappointing for us because on the corners and those kind of things, it was like, you know, we've seen the Sammy Morsey goal at Rotherham with a nice little um, training ground uh, routine. So you're thinking, OK, let's try one of these things because every cross going in was just getting headed away. Like they were solid in the air and that's the only way you can describe it. But we did have the chances, even the second half, you know, Ali has a chance as well. But it just kind of was just more in possession um, without really... You know, I, I wanted to see us start peppering that goal, you know, 20 yard strikes and stuff like that. But that's not really what we do, is it? So let's get into some player ratings then. Haladki, we've got to shout him out. Clean she, and like I said, he, he gives us that point right at the end. He was alert till the very end. Made some good saves, was good with his feet. You know, everything we had concerns about on Saturday, he showed us why he's still a good keeper. So, yeah, really, really good save from him at the end and, and good distribution as well. So, back to his best, I'd say. Fridge, Fridge back in on the right side this time. He just fits perfectly in our defence. He heads everything. He wins everything. He's I, I, Does this make sense if I say he's a really aggressive runner? Does that kind of make sense in terms, you know, when you're tracking back and you're going shoulder to shoulder with a man? Like, you're not winning that, man. I've not seen a, a fridge move that quick before. But yeah, I thought he was really good today. Really solid. Davis, man, he's just up and down, up and down. He was phenomenal today. Um, contender for man of the match for me, to be honest. Um, you know, bearing in mind he's had the illnesses. He plays 90 minutes every fucking game. And he just, mate, he's just got the engine. So... I don't know what he does or whatever. It's that flight simulator, man. It keeps him calm and it must be um, something good for his uh, for his mental and physical abilities because he must be... I'll have to check with Statman, but he must have the most minutes this season in the league, I think. But yeah, I thought Davis was quality. Sammy, again, another contender for man of the match. Really good today. Put us on the front foot all the time. Really drove the game. You know, proper captain's performance. I should probably just clip this up and just copy and paste it each week because it's the same thing. Like he is like he is the best player at our football club in terms of ability, leadership, you know, and when you take him out of the team you really, really miss him. So yeah, man, big up Sammy, he was really good today. Broadhead, wasn't expecting him to start to be honest. I said earlier maybe he needs to come off the bench because he was quality against Southampton like that, but he was on form today. You know, from the off, everything he was doing, he was making the right decisions. You know, before I've said he's the most frustrating player at times because he just overruns it or an extra touch and all the rest of it. Not today. Brody was on it and he was just so unlucky not to get that goal, man. I think it's off the inside of the post, but really, really good performance from Nathan Broded. Looks to be back to his best. If he can push on for these next four games, that's the type of game changer we need. Jackson, I thought Jackson did well. I know he's a bit of a Marmite character and again, probably some people will be saying that they didn't like his performance or whatever, but I thought he did really well. Stretched the defence, you know, had some good opportunities. First half, almost lays it on a plate for Kiefer. And even in the second half, he gets down that wing, plays the ball across. And I think, you know, maybe it's a bit of fatigue from our front players, but... If we were really, you know, busting a gut to get there, then I think that's a tapping in the bottom corner. But yeah, I thought it was a good performance from Jackson. In terms of the subs, I don't think they really impacted the game as we expected. You know, normally they come on, they change the game. And yes, you know, we were on that front foot. But you think about who come on, I thought maybe Sarmiento, he did, he did quite well. Although he almost gives the ball, well, he did give the ball away in the end, overrun it which almost uh, resulted in a goal. But he looks like a bright player. He's, he's someone that just runs at teams. You know, he's someone that you definitely have to be up playing. But I thought he did well. I thought Ali Alhamidi did well as well. Um, and again, unlucky not to score in, uh, when he come on. But for me, man of the match is one man and one man only. And that's Starboy Amari Hutchinson. Unlucky not to score. 
Feels weird, a midweek game coming home and Amari not scoring an injury time winner. But it's one of those, it's, you know, he had a very good performance again. When he was in the 10, he looks brilliant in the 10. And then when he moved out wide, I thought, okay, maybe, I think it was maybe a fact that the game plan slightly changed or whatever. But, you know, again, stretching the teams and he was like doubled and tripled up or whatever, but he still did well. Um, and he's just, you know, an exciting player, isn't he? So yeah, man, he was he was man of the match for me. But yeah, man, like I said, I feel it's a point gained. We're now joint top, you know, so okay, Leicester still got a game in hand, but importantly, we're ahead of Leeds by a point. It's all still in our hands, but we have got to start finding the back of the net now. It's not a concern so much, it's only two games that we ain't scored in. But it's one of those where because we've only we're running out of games and there's only so much left, we can't afford not to score now. Like we need to win on Saturday. And you know, I've seen enough today, and anyone else watching the game would have seen enough today to say, okay, there's been a big improvement from Saturday. So before I check out, I just want to pick up on the atmosphere. The atmosphere today was flat as a pancake. We've had some great atmosphere at the stadium and away over the past couple of seasons we need it now more than ever we need to be that 12th man Saturday I understand there were nerves fine park that move on today there shouldn't have been any nerves but we just looked really flat and we were just quiet you had obviously blue action singing big them up you know all day every day they do a wicked job shout out them man you had Andy and the fan zone lads behind us singing then you had me, there was a lad next to me, and obviously you know Mark who sits behind me, we're singing. And then we had obviously people in section five and obviously probably four as well. But the rest of the stadium seemed quiet. And even then, we need to pick this up as well. Why can we never sing in sync? We have about three or four different songs going. That kills off the atmosphere. I don't want to be negative on it, but I just have to say, yo, if you're at the games, please sing your heart out. You don't understand how big it is, you as a 12th man. You singing, you chanting, it makes a difference. It gives them that boost, man. And like it, but like I said, we're the 12th man. Just play our part for the next four games. Because if we play our part, the lads will play their part on a pitch. Together, one club, we're going to get promoted to the Premier League. You'll be a part of that. Let's get the atmosphere rocking again, right? I know, maybe, let's call it the Norwich hangover. Yeah, done now. Saturday, if you're at Borough, well, not at Borough, but if you're at the game for Borough on Saturday, make sure you sing your hearts out, man. Please, please, please back the team. Be the 12th man. Get us over that line. And let's enjoy Premier League football next season. So, like I said, for me, that is a big point. It's a point gained. It's not too dropped. And I genuinely feel this is it now. This is our season. You know, that point puts us joint top with Leicester. Yes, they've got a game in hand. But that point also puts us a point ahead of Leeds. And now everything is still in our hands. With four to go, we are the masters of our own destiny. So like I said, I feel it's a point gained. You tell me what you think. And if you like the content... Make sure you smash that like button. And like I said, if you ain't subscribed, hit the subscribe. And yeah, man, if you're at the Borough game, make sure you sing your hearts out, man. I'll see you there.